All right, again, guys, my name is Kevin Cordier with Helco Technologies. I'm our Midwest Territory Manager. Um, just wanted to come down today and share with you guys a little bit of information about uh, Helco Side Hill Combines. I know we've got uh, quite a few Side Hill Combines down this area. We're getting a few Helco down here, too. Just want to share a little information with you guys. Just want to clear the air right now. I know I'm over here in Hawkeye country, but I am an Iowa State fan, so you can hold it against me if you want. And we both teams were off to a rocky start this last week. But uh, just to give you guys a little uh, information about Hilco for those of you guys who aren't familiar with our company. We've actually been building leveling systems since 1993. This is our 20th anniversary this year. Um, located up in Idaho, a small town up in Idaho, but our biggest market is actually out here in the Midwest, especially in western Iowa, east Nebraska, western Wisconsin. Those areas are places where we have a lot of units out here. Um, currently, we build over 90% of leveling systems sold in North America in a, on a yearly basis. So. We, we, we built quite a few of these, we've got them all over the place, and we're excited to be getting some down here in southeast Iowa. So a lot of you guys know why you use the side hill combine, and obviously we don't want fields looking like that. I know that's an extreme case, but just uh, just trying to get the point across there a little bit. But first thing we want to do is talk about, I know that I'm preaching the choir to some of you guys, but I just want to talk about the economics of the leveling system here to start off. And I want to talk about grain savings, productivity, operating costs, and all those things come down to annual ownership costs as well as return on our investment in this equipment. So the two things that I, I, I have uh, people say to me a lot, and I'll just you know, get them out in the air right now, is, oh, my rotary combine's big enough that I don't need a site to level like this. I also hear that my rotary combine has more cleaning capacity than a walker combine did. And um, you know, those two things I hear a lot, and I guess what I always say is, well, I don't, it doesn't matter if you have a walker machine or a rotor machine. Gravity is going to affect you just the same. You got, you got a leveling machine in the hills. Your grain is going to overload, overload the downhill side of that cleaning chute. That air coming off your cleaning fan is going to take the path of least resistance. And it's going to go around that uphill side. It's going to go around that pile of grain. So as a result, what's going to happen? You're going to get a dirty grain tank sample. Only way to avoid excessive grain loss out of the back of the machine is to slow that machine down. So now we're losing productivity. Have a leveling system on your combine, you maintain that even distribution of grain across that cleaning shoe. We maximize our cleaning, minimize our grain losses out of the back of the machine. And we've done we've done some pretty extensive grain loss studies over the years to sort of verify the benefits of, benefits of having a leveling system on our combine. And um, you know, we've created some grain loss curves here to, to for you for you as customers to evaluate the need for, for something like this within your operation. I realize that some of these these prices are based off of things we had going on last year, and obviously they're not going to be that way this year. But um, you can see, you know, like I always, I like to get the example here at six percent slope. So if we're a level land combine on a six percent slope, and six percent is not very much. For example, if you plug your combine up to a nine-inch block on one side, that would essentially pitch it about six percent. So it's not, you know, most of the ground here is at least six percent. So a six percent slope. In a left lane combine, if you're not slowing down any, you're going your same same speed as you do on flat ground. In beans, you're losing about two and a half bushels the acre, and in corn, you're losing about five bushels the acre. So it can add up to a lot in a hurry, and you can see it just gets worse and worse as we get steeper and steeper in those hills. You know, I put this in here because uh, you know the last the last couple of years have been awfully good to a lot of people in farming, and this you know these are September corn features, and this is just what. I, looked up this morning where we're at right now and I guess my point I want to make right here is um, you know in years we're good we you know we do really well but I always think that uh, in years where crops are a little bit tighter prices are a little bit lower those are years where it pays even more to save every bushel that we can and get every bushel we can into that bin so I mean it's a uh, it's, it's imperative that we, that we do everything we can I know I uh, have a lot of people you know Older farmers tell me the two most important pieces of equipment to have are their planters and their com you know, or your planter and your combine. You know, we spend a lot of money to, to you know, going straight and doing everything we can with our planter and a lot of things that are combined. And this is just one more thing we do to maximize the performance of that combine and make the most money we can off the acres that we have. So with grain savings comes increased productivity. Again, if we've got a leveling system on our combine, we can maintain the higher speeds once we get in the hills. We're not having to slow down, so we can keep things rolling along. The grain tank remains level at all times, obviously. You know, we're, we've got these big new machines, or we're paying a lot of money for them. You know, if we can keep that machine level, we can keep that, 
you know, fill that grain tank up, utilize it more. We're not unloading on the go nearly as often again. Maintaining our productivity. Operator comfort, you know, can't put a value on that, but if a guy can sit level in his cab all day, he's going to feel the heck of a lot better at the end of the day. And harvesting that can drag on and on if we're having to hold ourselves up in that seat throughout the harvest as well. And I have this chart in here, and I, I've got a picture of this out in the, out in the shop as well, but it's a productivity comparison of the Class 6 combine. So these first three bars are level end machines. So level end machine, flat ground, 100% productivity, full level end speed. That same combine on a 9% slope, well now, in order to avoid excessive grain loss, we've had to slow our machine down to 3.6 mile an hour, so now we're at 65% of our original productivity. Same level end combine on 18% slope, now we're all the way down to 30% of our original productivity, going less than two miles an hour. And again, if you know we're not adjusting like that, then obviously we're going to be putting some grain on the ground out the back of that machine. Last column here, Hillsboy Quick Combine, 18% slope, still got 100% productivity, still able to maintain that full level land speed. With increased productivity comes lower operating costs. Obviously, if we're not having to slow down, we're, we're going to save money on that combine. We're going to decrease our labor costs. We're not going to have to pay that guy as many hours to sit next to the machine. We're going to decrease our fuel costs. Combine um, runner for a few hours is getting things done quicker. We're burning less fuel. The big one right here, I like to point out, is decreased combine separator hours. I've had more than one customer tell me that when they've gone from a level end combine to a hill quick pick combine, they reduce their annual separator hours in the 15 to 20 percent range. And you start you start adding that up, you know, thinking how many hours you put in your combine every year and you know, you're trading that machine every one, two, every three years. Those separator hours are awfully valuable at trading time. And I would say in, in more cases than not, the, set, the, the, the dollars you save on your decreasing your separator hours more than pays your annual cost of ownership of having a leveling system on your combine. Uh, along the same lines of cost of ownership, I always like to point out, Hillcoats have a very good reputation of having a good resale value. That's important to our dealers as well as your cust as well as our to our customers. So that you know, it all goes back to the investment you're making when you purchase that piece of machinery. You're going to get a big chunk of that money back out of when you go to trade that machine in for your next one. And it really comes down to what we call the leveling advantage. So our grain savings plus our productivity savings minus our cost of ownership comes down to total leveling advantage. And I strongly encourage anybody who who has you know thought about a leveling system or wants to evaluate whether this is a viable option for their operation, we've got an excellent tool on our website. And it's our return on investment calculator. And it's great because you guys can go and put in all the specific information about your farm. You know, I get this many acres, this percent slope, so on. I get this size of equipment. I go this flat. Goes, goes, I go this fast. And it gives me an idea if this is, you know, would be a viable, op you know, viable option for your operation. It's something you should, you know, take another look at. So I encourage all of you guys to take a look at that. You, if you've got any questions about that, you can ask me later. So I'll talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of what we got. And I'll start off with the S series machines. We've got three different models. <coughs> S-series combines, obviously went for the five, the you know, class five machines, and then we've got the GS7010 for the class six and class sevens, GS9010 for the big machines. All of our leveling cycle leveling systems do an 18% slope compensation. You guys have that, you guys get yonder cycle combines, that's the same as they, and they go there 18%. We also still have systems available for 60 and 70 series machines. We put quite a few leveling systems on these combines on a yearly basis. So that's definitely an option too if that's something you guys wanted to look into. When you get a Hilco leveling system on your combine, there are basically four main components. We've got our main overcarriage and undercarriage assembly right here. We've got a drop axle for the rear axle, and we do put our own face plate and transition on the front machine as well. So a little, little bit more detail about that. So the overcarriage and undercarriage assembly, what's a now, just for explanation, you know, the big difference between a Hillco side hill and a Jonder side hill is the fact that we are a center pivot design. Our axle is attached to the frame via a center pivot point, and the hydraulic cylinders are on each side. So essentially what that means is we're just rotating the combine around that pivot point. So, you know, in, in a sense we're balancing the combine around that pivot point. You know, versus the Jonder side hill, you've got the big cylinders on the outside. What does that mean? We're able to level a lot quicker. We're transferring all the way to the combine seat ground through that pivot pin versus the, versus the hydraulic cylinders. Um, when we put the hill on a combine, we do add some height to the combine. 
on a 1670 series combine, we, we had about five inches, a little less than five inches. So the draw axle is, a, is essentially a glorified space we put in the back of the machine too to, to raise the back up, maintain that correct four out pitch. S series machines, we raised about six and a half inches, so we had a little bit more height than the S series combine. Again, I told you we put our own faceplate in transition on the front of the feeder house. The reason we do that is we get to have, you know, obviously more degrees of freedom than the stock contour master would have, so we have to put our own on there. Still have a, still have the same amount of four half adjust as we had before on, on the stock unit. Uh, the lateral tilt, you know, again, you think you're your side, but we have our cables on there that tilt the head back and forth. A little bit troublesome from time to time. Pilkwack uses a hydraulic system for this, and how it works is we have to have a master cylinder that goes from the axle and then it connects to the frame. And it feeds oil to a slave cylinder mounted on the back side of the, on the, the face plate So as the combine tilts, it kind of rotates the header that way. Works very well, very seamlessly. All your contour master, automated header height control, all that stuff works just the same as the one with a, with a level end machine. Hydraulics. We mount our own independent gear pump up here on the output shaft, rear engine housing. Our hydraulics are essentially isolated from the rest of the combine, other than the fact that we do use oil out of the reservoir. Other than that, it's, it's separate, so it makes it easy to figure out if there's something going on with us or something going on with the combine if there's an issue. We use proportional flow control valves for all our hydraulics. What does that mean to you guys? The combines are going to level really smooth going this field. You know, they're going to know that the combine's level. You know, you think you're going to your side bill, you feel it tipping back and forth. You're not going to feel that until it goes. These are our cap controls for 60 and 70 series. We're going to get the S series in the next slide. But on the 60 and 70 series, we've got a monitor that we mount up in the cab. You can control everything from that. You can go there to do some diagnostics, change settings, things like that. We also offer some auxiliary switches that you can mount just about anywhere you want. They're nice to have because you can kind of just run it by feel, you know, go from auto to auto manual level and things like that. And the one thing here too are our slope sensing. We use an electronic clinometer for slope sensing. Again, you know, pendulum system and murky boards like we have on some of the other side of the combines. So the few things are different about the S series combine versus what I talked about. Again, um, we don't have the monitor up in the cab. The entire leveling system in general is built just a little bit heavier on these S series combines. You know, they're, they're just heavier machines in general than a 60 or 70 series machine. So. As a result, our help was have to be built a little bit heavier. Um, on, the, on the big machines and the S-series machines, we don't have to use a hydraulic pump. They've got open center hydraulics on them, so we don't have to use our own pump on them. We can just tap into what's there. You know, in the cab, we're actually able to utilize buttons that are already in the console on an S-series combine. You can see these are manual left and right. This is our button that toggles from auto manual and like so we don't have a monitor up in the cab anymore either. Very seamless design. You get up and get up in the cab. You won't even know there's anything different out there. One other thing, like I said, since we do add a little bit of extra height to these S series, we do add a retractable bottom step there to make it a little bit easier to get in and out, but still maintain that ground clearance. We need. And again, going back to the fact that this combine from heavier, we have again beefed up hydraulic cylinders on these S series units. Insulation. This is a question I get a lot. You know, a lot of guys they actually offer near factory insulation. You know, if we go over to Kelowna, Illinois, it's only about six or seven miles from the factory. That's where we do our, our near factory installations. And the majority of new machines, that's what we do. Um, occasionally, we'll get some used machines taken over there and do that. Of course, the dealer always has the option of doing the install themselves, whether it be new or used. So it's whatever whatever you and the, your dealer decide, but we can do it either way. Other thing I want to mention, too, is our agreement we have with John Deere. We have a very good relationship with John Deere. We work very closely with him, you know, when we're designing new products. We share information back and forth. Part of our referral supplier agreement with Deere is it says that if you put a Hilco leveling system on your combine, it's not going to affect any of the warranty provided to you by John Deere for the rest of the machine. Our warranty is separate, but it won't affect anything else that you're given to, given to you by John Deere. So, guys, that's all I've got right now. I know you, you know, if you want for more detailed information, please come up and talk to me. I've got a table of literature and uh, some stuff you guys can grab out there in the shop, and I got some video playing you guys can see some stuff in action. So I appreciate your attention and with that I'm done, I'll turn it back over to whoever else. Thanks.